Thanks for listening. This is the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we will talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology coach, and personalized learning coordinator for my district. And I'm joined by producer slash husband, Fuzz Martin. Hello. Today, we are going to talk about Flip Snack, Room Styler, and Floor Planner. Yes. All cool tools. They are cool tools. So, um, last week we talked about presentation materials. And before that, it was, or I guess... Like projects. Projects, and, yeah, yeah. Presentations. Um, before that, we talked about organizational tools. Mm-hmm. We talked about... Um, what were the, the Padlet t- and Google Keep were the first two. That's right. And uh, now these are more visual tools. Correct. Yeah, for like giving students more of a design element. So it's not just, I mean, they can use these tools in presentations, but it's, um, there's a lot, there's like design and creativity that really go into the tools that we're going to be talking about today. And there are tons of different ways that students can use these. They're not not just in presentations or in reports and things like that. They can use them, some of these for writing, some of these for math, and lots of cool different pieces. But they're all, as always, as we try to do, these are all free Free. tools that you can use in your classroom tomorrow. Correct. And um, if your district allows... You to use these the tech tools for podcasts. Yes. <laughs> tech tools for teachers podcast is not responsible for <laughs> what your district allows or doesn't. But yes, um, more than likely you will be able to use these right away in your classroom tomorrow. Um, and they've got some good connections where you're able to share these, um, so you can share them with pre- parents, um, which is kind of nice where the students can design something and then share it in the classroom, which we do often. But then also these are easy ones that um, they can just email their parents even be like, "Hey, look what I created today," and it's mm-hmm. pretty cool. So. Excellent. Well, let's get to going here and talk about Flip Snack. By the way, a lot of these I've noticed have funny names. Like the 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 one that I when I first started, I start I was on a board, a marketing board for a STEM school that you were teaching at, mm-hmm. and they said, uh, "I'm going to send you a doodle poll to." To sign, yeah. to, to sign up for a time and i Which thought it's like survey monkey but well no it's like it's, it's a it's a brilliant tool <laughs> for f- getting people all in a room or on a phone at the same time and it has a tremendous business side upside to it but from a in the professional world if i say to somebody in a suit and tie i'm gonna send you a doodle poll <laughs> it's just a little silly. It's a little silly, but um, Flip Snack, but great resources. Right? So who cares what they're called? Flip Snack <laughs> is an awesome resource. Right. And today I don't you understand like, the name. Yeah. You're like, but uh, it, it's, flip fun. Snack? it's fun. It's fun. It's cool. Um, and it does have also a business side to it. So it anyway. does. Yes. So, so um, Flip Snack, you you sign in uh, through Google. Just use your regular Google sign in. The kids can do the same thing. Um, so they click, sign in, connect with Google, and then it comes to your homepage. Um, from there, I have quite a few loaded in. Um, I use them for examples with my students a lot, and they share them. What, um, what are they? What, with me? What are they? What are? What is a flip snack? A flip snack. Yes. Yeah, so a flip snack is basically a digital flip book. Okay. So it looks just like a magazine. A magazine. And when you are creating them, it's just like putting pictures and you can put your information, everything into a now walk you guys kind of through the process. And then when you're done and you go to share it, you get this shareable link and it gets sent to people and it looks like a book and they turn pages. It's digitally. So mm-hmm. you like click the arrow to turn pages. Sure. Um, but it's just like reading a book. So it's really cool because students are like, I wrote a book and usually... If it's written in a, in a Google Doc or something, like it's a piece of writing and it's always their published work, but when it looks like it's an actual book, mm-hmm. it seems to have more impact on them and they're more excited about it. Sure. A little bit more ownership of it. Yeah. And parents are impressed because like, oh, this is super cool mm-hmm. because my kid like wrote a book or shared information within this book, even right. though you don't have to print them, there's not going to be paper. Yeah. Um, you are able to like upload and download the information that comes out of them, but... Um, it's just kind of a cool way for 
kids to share their work with others. What uh, what format does it share? And is it just share in the in the flip book or uh, the flip snack? So in the software? free version, mm-hmm. um, you are able to share make a shareable link. Okay. Um, and it's public. But if you have the paid version, then obviously you, you can, can do download more things st- with yes. it. Yeah. Um, you are able. Yeah. The download features are locked up in the free version so you have to pay it to actually download it sure but but you have the shareable link so you can yeah, share the, the link with anybody mm-hmm. right so would a student create this and then just share it in their they just they send you the shareable link um they can send your email or put it in your google classroom or mm-hmm. they can email it to their parents and the parents can see it too awesome so what kinds of projects have you used this for um so i've used it for a bunch of different things in my reading class my students have um redone summaries of novels they've written in a shorter format i've Mm -hmm. had them write into like a children's version okay so you know a lot of books adult books are shifted to middle school level so then i took their middle school level books and they shifted them to like elementary level so they will create like a 16 page book Mm -hmm. um we use like for example they use chasing lincoln's killer and then they wrote about Lincoln's assassination, but it was at an elementary level then. And they took pictures um, from the people in the story or in the book and then went through and wrote a shorter summary of it and, and that kind of thing. Um, our language arts teachers use it a lot at our school where kids are writing stories or they do creative writing and they put it into there and they create their books. Um, our science teachers also done an invasive species plant pamphlet type thing well it's been where each like an alphabet book because they did invasive species and then they um did it again into for like a younger level so there was like abcs of invasive species in the area yeah and so then um they created that and what's kind of cool when you have um flip snack you can upload pdfs so if you've done something already and you don't know how to share it out to people you can upload works that you've already done in PDF form and then it will put it into a flip snack where you can oh, cool. turn the pages and everything. So. Now with the free version, is there a limit to the number that you have in your account? Yes. Okay. Um, currently I'm at my limit and I think I'm at six. Okay. Give or take, I think it's the amount of pages you might have total versus, um, number of actual books. Yeah. Okay. I'm not for sure on that though. Um, but you are able to delete out ones that you don't Aren't use. Using anymore. Yeah. Sure. And then you can, and, then you can upload new ones and things like that. Very so, good. What's the URL? Um, it is going to be flipsnack.com. Easy enough. Yes. I suppose when your name's Flipsnack, the URL is probably it's available. Flipsnack. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, flip and have a snack. Yeah. So, um, we can walk through the process a little bit. Okay. So you're going to click the create from scratch button, mm-hmm. um, and when that comes up, it'll let you choose your type of flip snack flip snack doesn't just come in um one format either you kind of have options where you can there is a presentation option and there's different size books um and so you can pick and choose like which format you want um now that i'm looking at you get three official ones that are published that you can do in the free version so okay. you know um and then you just again edit or delete out as you want to Then once you're in there, it gives you all kinds of layouts. So it's pre-done layouts. You can start from scratch, but it's really nice just to start with a layout and then delete out what they have Mm -hmm. versus starting over. And the kids really like having a layout to start from because then they can add all the pages and pictures they want, but they have something to look at. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that you can pick your layout. And it gives you, um, if you click on it, you can see that they give you different setups for pages, kind of like a like a format if you want to use it. Um, You also have the choice to choose all the different types of text and heading and subheadings. And Mm -hmm. I mean, the students can be very creative with these. You, once you pick your text and you click on it within the page, you have the options of size and color and spacing and all of that comes across the top. Um, Students can add images to there so they can upload their own images. They can find them online. They can even take pictures of themselves so they could create even like a diary or a journal or if they went on a vacation or Mm -hmm. if there's, you know, a weekend thing they're documenting, they can do that too. Um, The one thing you'll see like a video button that is all premium content. So if you want videos or adding audio, you have to have the premium version. So those are not allowed. Sure. I've never had a student miss those. Right. When it comes to us creating stuff. 
Um, and then they even have like tags in there. So you could put a, like a Facebook tag or Instagram and those logos are right there to drop into your flip okay. snack if you wanted to. Yep. Um, and then on the bottom, there's shapes, which the kids are always like, why are these shapes there? But you can add them in the background and it adds more visuals and you can change the colors and sizes and all that kind of stuff. Make a flow chart. You absolutely could. Or a timeline even. Mm, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of a lot of options with that. Um, so that's on the left-hand Venn side. diagrams. Yeah. Make all sorts of stuff. Yeah. For like every subject can be covered with a flip snack. On the right-hand side, you'll see there's like a bunch of different layers. So you can see as you're adding things to your page, you can delete things off, which sometimes the students don't know how that works right away. So you kind of have to walk them through if you highlight it, it's going to delete that section, but the other layering effects will still be within their, within okay. their pages. Um, and then also on the right-hand side, you click Pages, and on the bottom, there's a little plus sign, and that's how you add all the pages into your book. Sure. Um, when you click Preview, the magic happens, and you can actually see the preview of your flip snack. And it looks like little pages that are going to move. Oh, sure. And yeah. it flips over like an actual page. Um, I've had students sometimes in class, too, if we are making these just a quick flip, flip snack in class and they're going to present to everybody, I'll have them just pull up their preview even without even sharing it and going through that process. Because if you click preview, you can right. make it look like a book. Right. Um, when you are ready and everything's amazing and beautiful, um, I always double check file. You can click save there. Um does, does it auto save as they're creating, or do they have to? Um, I believe it auto saves. Okay. But if they've, but it's not best to double check. Yeah, it's always best to double check. I always have them double check, make sure it's saved. Um, because if there's sometimes in districts you'll have like Wi-Fi gets a little slower at times. Oh yeah. So it's just always good to have them save it, um, and then click make it a flip book, <clears throat> and then you'll see these like customizable options and everything says premium. That's okay. You can ignore all of that and just click next. And then you have your, you want to put your name in there. You can title your flip book, um, choose your category. They do have to choose what category it's going to fall into. Usually I click education, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they've picked that and they can scroll on down. And from that point, they are able to click publish. And once they click publish, this nifty little direct link comes up and that's the link that they can share with you, their parents, put in classroom, and then all of their work is a little published flip book that they have to share with people. So now is that link public? Is it on the, the main uh, flip it, snack site? or is It's it, public, but it's not... Not searchable? Not easy to find. Okay. Um, like a lot of things where, you know, there's tons of flip snacks out there and there's yeah. you know so Got it. it's one of those where i do yeah i don't have my students put their like personal their full name stuff, in there yeah. they can do like first name or first mm -hmm. name last initial or you know is you're, you're the teacher so you're gonna know but yeah. um yeah so then they can just share that out and you've got that they also can embed it if they want to if there's if they're you know creating things they want to embed it into something they can do that too so that is flip snack well it's really kind of fun i don't know it's just it's really yeah cool. it looks really cool there are uh, i can see a ton of different types of possibilities for that mm -hmm. and um, subject areas like all different subject areas even down to um even like music or band mm -hmm. you know they mm -hmm. can record different things that they're doing or journal it or right that kind of thing so we had the snack let's we get the to the snack. entree I, oh, that's <laughs> I bad jokes. The, the yeah, there are none of them are ever good. Um, my jokes. These tools are awesome. The next ones that we're going to talk about are they go together. They go together. They're two that I've used, which is fun because, because I, I used them because you told me about them and I, I started playing with it and realized something How that much I, fun it is. Something that I could do. So tell us about. Room Styler and Floor Planner. All right. So Room Styler, I've been using for a while in my classroom, which would a while means like a couple of years, mm -hmm. several years I've been using in my classroom. And I'll talk all about Room Styler, but then there's also a new upgrade, which is called Floor Planner, mm -hmm. which is basically the upgrade of Room Styler. It seems like they had created the 
Room Styler, which is awesome. They had created the Room Styler code, and then they created this new version, but realized they couldn't. I, and I'm, I don't know if this is true or not. I'm just, I was trying to find the link. So I think they were trying to take Room Styler and make it better, and they made it so good that they couldn't take all the old converted Room Stylers and move them over to Floor Planner. So they've got both sides. So they've got both and they, sides. And they both work. They're both free. And and they're great. So you can awesome. pick and choose. Because to me, you can almost use them for two different points as I mm-hmm. start thinking about this. So the first one, we'll talk about Room Styler. Um, when you sign in with Room Styler, it is not a Google sign-in. Your kids have to have links. They have, a, they have to actually come up with their sign-in. Which in the classroom, sometimes Google is just easier. But... Mm-hmm. Th- that's one of the things like in room style you have to actually sign in and then remember your sign in and remember your password yes um so in room styler you are able to create and design 3d rooms we'll put some images up on our website smartwi.com of some rooms that you created yes you created a gym for our daughter yeah She's into weightlifting, and so I was literally just playing around. I was like, hey, I just designed you a gym. Um, so it's super cool. The students really, really enjoy Room Styler. So when it comes from a teaching aspect, not just playing around and designing these rooms because you could spend hours. I have students, once I show them this website, spend hours, like, go home. And I was. they'll tell me, I was really bored, Mrs. Martin. So mm-hmm. I sat in Room Styler for three hours this weekend designing rooms for people. It really sucks you in, but the design aspect of it is super cool because the kids get to design and create anything they can come up with. Um, Mm -hmm. So when it comes from a teaching perspective, not just designing rooms, but thinking about, so if a student just did a piece of creative writing and you want them to design their setting, you could use this. Mm -hmm. Um, I've used it in my like real world finance class where kids... um, design a restaurant from the ground up talk about budgeting and figuring out like themes of their restaurant the food and all that comes from and they use room style to design their restaurant for me i have them also build a house they do the same thing um i've had math teachers use room styler because you're able to actually get the square footage of the rooms and you can switch between meters and feet Mm -hmm. um and so they get an actual visual of how all that's going to work for them so you as an educator could use it to lay out your classroom and come up with a cool idea speaking of one of our students so we wanted to redesign our computer lab last Mm -hmm. year and we wanted a visual and after they had used it my classroom they had taken it to the science teacher and like, oh, well, we already know how to use this website. And one of our students actually designed the layout for our computer lab using awesome. Room Styler. So we have um, like 3D images of, and our and the computer lab has changed now and it looks very close wow. to what our student designed. So yeah, that's great. Um, anyway, so there's lots of cool things you can do with it. And again, I'm talking about Room Styler, but Floor Planner is like the upgrade version of Room Styler. Yeah, so where I would say the upgrades are. So in Room Styler, you you design your room in like a flat 2D type setting. And you click and drag like um, your entire interior. So you, you're thinking like the floor, what the floors look like, the walls, the different paints or uh, wall um, decorations. decorations, the furniture, the windows, the doors, the cabinets the sinks and the details on all, them like you can put the towels and cups on yeah. desks you know and it's great and what you do is you, you turn the camera where you want it to go and you take a picture and you can take super high res photorealistic images from that and they look amazing when you go to floor planner it does it but it's faster and also you can walk through the rooms kind of like if you're in google street where you can like kind of walk, view? The, yeah, street view where you can walk down the street and look around. You can do that in Floor Planner. It works pretty much the same way. It just seems to be a like more better, panoramic. Yeah, it seems to be stuff. quicker on the design side, and also faster processing the images. And you can see more images at once. Like room style, you can see one room, but in Floor Planner, you can see all of the rooms that you right. design. So that would be different. Exactly. So also an upgrade with Floor Planner is you can log in with your Google account. So you can have your students log in with their Google accounts. Then they don't have to remember a username and password and go through that setup process the same way. So it's mm-hmm. a little bit easier from that side and um, a little bit better from the experience. But this is something that 
um, like you said, you've been using Room Styler for years, mm-hmm. and it's been free, and it's still there, and it's still free. Mm-hmm. Uh, Floor Planner just seems like the like, upgraded version. Like of it. we were looking on their social media pages, and and Room Planner hasn't really been updated since 2016, and Floor Planner seems like they're more recent, like um, like less than a month ago they've mm-hmm. updated their their Twitter account. So. Um, so either way, we're going to walk you through kind of the process of yeah. how, how the whole pages work. Um, and then you can pick and choose what would be best for your students. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you sign into Room Styler, you sign yourself in with your remembering your password, probably your Google stuff, but <laughs> right. you actually have to remember it. Mm-hmm. And or you're going to sign in with Floor Planner and use your Google stuff. Anyway, so you're going to click create new. There's like a giant plus button and you're going to create a new one. And everything's drag and drop. So you're just gonna pick your floor plan, you're gonna drag and drop it into um, like your workspace and then you can extend it. So you pull on like the walls and you can make it bigger Mm -hmm. um, and adjust it as you want to. And you'll see the little camera that's in your room. My students have definitely taught me about this camera because I always have a tendency to face it at a wall. And they're like, no, (laughs) you gotta like turn it. And then you turn it. And that I think has definitely changed over time too because when I first started using this, it the camera was not as easily moved as it is now as I'm mm-hmm. playing around with it. Um, anyway, so you can pick the visual, like the corner, and you can change it around as you want to. And then you click on the little piece of furniture um, in Room Styler, it's a little chair. Mm-hmm. And then you have this giant list of like accessories and architecture, and you can even pick Christmas or electrical. And from there, you then have hundreds of choices of stuff to put in your room. Um, they actually have a, an entire IKEA collection in there. I was reading about uh, that they, they had partnered with IKEA. And in fact, I think they're from wherever IKEA is from. Um, and they, they have, they've partnered with them. And so, so you can like, see the visuals, like when you're building your house, you can actually see the little furniture. Except for you don't have to put it together. Yes, it's already there. So earlier today, I picked the gym out because I was building a gym, and you'll get to see that one. And again, that's not my, that's like a 15 minute room styler just yeah. to prep everybody. You can spend hours in this and make intricate little bits and pieces. Um, my students have designed, as I said, like restaurants, and they've done themed animal restaurants. Mm-hmm. And yes, there is a T Rex option, <laughs> there is pigs and chickens and cats and dogs. So not only is there furniture but there is also animals yeah they have plants you can p- drop plants in there's there. people mm-hmm. and so it's pretty amazing when you give the kids free reign with what they get to design what they come up with um yeah. one of my students did a a dog themed hot dog restaurant and so they made an animal area for dogs and then they sold hot dogs mm. and they put the whole thing together um, anyway, so they couldn't get it passed by the health inspector, but right, we did talk about that. <laughs> They're like, but maybe if it was like two separate rooms, and you know what, it, I did. Their creativity was amazing. No, no, that was great. So you just drag and drop your furniture right in. Um, again, you can turn it around as you want to. If you click on the little paint brush, you'll see carpet, and paint, and stone. From there, you can pick your colors, and whatever you pick, you drag to the wall. It makes it that color, and you'll see the render come up in the right-hand side. So as you're working, you can have a visual of what you're actually designing in your room, which is pretty cool. That's more like it's like a high-speed, uh, lower-res render. But then when you click export, yes, then you get a but your choice to make how how big you want to make it. And sometimes mm-hmm. it takes a little while if you're going to export a 4K image mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to a you know a web-ready image, right? So. And the students usually it's just they like to see the little pictures showing up Mm -hmm. like look what i'm making this is pretty cool um there is what i think is super cool you click the little light bulb there is a day to night feature so when you put windows in and you put daylight in daylight actually will show up Mm -hmm. or it'll show like that time of day um i've had students who really take that kind of stuff to heart and really yeah and you had the you have the option of when you put windows in then you can choose the image in the background of the windows so then they'll find a picture online of like the mountains and then you put that in so then you can see like through look through their window and see those mountains in the background that they've picked out so yeah that's cool um again you can literally spend hours doing this and so you just pick and drag and drop and make their settings and then when they're ready to go um they can take their 3d photo 
it will give the kids have to give it a title. Um, is it real property? No. Um, and then anyone can view the room. If you switch it to be private, when the kids go to share the link with you, you cannot see it. Okay. So it has to be set to public just because when they can't share the link, it doesn't work. Right. Um, Cause then they're the only person who can see it. I mean, yeah, if it's, if, if it's, it's private, private right. only the student can see it. Now, with floor planner it's a little bit different is you can click a button you can click the 3d button and it will take you outside of the room so you can actually see the entirety of the building and click and drag and spin it around as a 3d model and the rest of the setup is pretty much the same like to create a floor it's pretty much the same as room styler a little bit faster a few like upgraded tools and such for it but the process is essentially the same then you click and add in your furniture there's a a button that you can click though or you can click in let's say you put in um you put in three couches and um an end table and a coffee table and a rug there's a little like it's kind of like when you're in in iphoto and you want to enhance a photo and you click the enhance button and it makes the lighting what it thinks it's supposed to be it will change all of those images to be one set of style hmm. so that's not all different kind of styles sitting in a room cool. so that it kind of auto enhances that that image but it's really fast really quick and i can see using it from to create a setting in such an education world i can also see using it to in the professional side of things to decorate your office or rearrange your office or well or, and you've thought about you've used room style a little bit for rearranging your yeah. office when you had yeah. plans to rearrange your office and every desk had a little laptop and little pencils it and did. you had I flat had, screen tvs in there yeah, i created a, a of, conference room with a, uh, a glass wall and mm -hmm. And a, so a, even if you're not styling with your students and you just want to go try out this website, it's definitely, they are highly entertaining. I definitely recommend that you go at least for yourself, log on the floor planner and play around, with play it. around with it. You'll love it. And you'll find a way to use it in your classroom. Definitely. So it's a good show. It was fun stuff. Lots of fun things and ways to use them. For sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you for listening today. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get any more information on the links and the technology we discussed today in this episode, you can visit SmartNWI.com. Um, new episodes will be happening each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed in this podcast and the Smart and WI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed on this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantees that these tools will work for you as described, but we hope they do. Talk to you next week.